All right, again, welcome back to Pre-Calc 1, Math 153, here at Central Washington University. Today we're going to talk about Section 2.3, which is solving basic inequalities. Uh, definitely not as long as the previous section. Uh, section 2.2, again, that's a big, big section uh, during the class. But this one, start us off in inequalities, then we go to 2.4, and that is the end of uh, inequalities. We'll talk about compound inequalities, and that's, that's really our chapter for us. So let's get started with that today. Today's topic, again, solving basic inequalities. First thing you're probably wondering walking in the door, what are you going to learn today? Your goal for your learning, given an inequality. Determine the interval of the solution. Second thing, that's our first goal for today. We got a couple again today. Second thing, given an absolute value inequality. Given an absolute value inequality, find the interval of the solution. So again, to the instructor, again, I'll give plenty of opportunities to pause as we're going through examples. I do go pretty quickly through the material, so again, if you need to re-look uh, re at an example or stop and have a conversation, feel free as we're going through. That's a definite advantage of this presentation method as we're going through. Today we'll talk about uh, an example, probably had in Algebra 2, then we'll move on to uh, some new stuff today. So let's first off, let's take a look at an example. Uh, example number one. Let's go for 13, negative 13t minus 7 is less than or equal to 4 times the quantity t minus 1. Now, just to start off with a review or some of the things we got to watch out for in this, uh, what is the thing we have to look out for? What's the unique thing that we have to deal with inequalities that we don't have to deal with uh, when we have equalities? Go ahead and take a second to talk about that question. With that, uh, several things. First off, the solution is a range instead of a number. There's going to be a whole range of solutions instead of just one number that gives us the correct answer. Second thing, um, if we're multiplying or we're dividing by a negative number, we have to remember to flip the sign around. So you probably remember the gator analogies from when you were a kid. If it's facing one way, once you multiply or divide by a negative, it has to be flipping the other way before you get your solution. So as we go through, let's take a look at this one. First thing we're going to want to do is multiply that 4 through. So we have negative 13t minus 7 less than or equal to 4t plus 1, oops, plus 4. Good thing you guys here on campus caught that. Um, just, like a, just like solving the linear equation, next thing we're going to want to do, get all our t's on one side, everything else on the other. So uh, this one, well, I'm going to flip this one around a little bit. Let's move the t's over here. Let's minus 4t. Now, could you have added 13t? Absolutely. Actually, you'll end up with the same solution, too. So we have 4 left on the right side. We have minus 17t minus 7 on the left-hand side. Next step, add 7 to both sides. One more step left, negative 17t less than or equal to 11. We need to divide by negative 17. So we have t left on the left-hand side. We have negative 11 17, so we're negative 11 over 17. Now question, what goes, what goes in the middle? Because we divide it by a negative, we do have to flip it. So instead of being less than, we're going to have greater than. Keep the equal sign. So t is greater than or equal to negative 11 17. If uh, you feel your students need to work another example, go ahead and pause right now, have another example, and then we'll go on to the next one. Example two, let's get into something uh, that's real life or get a, get a feel for something. This one we got uh, drug company. Uh, drug must be stored between 15 and 29 degrees Celsius. 
Unfortunately, though, the nurses you're working with, the hospital you're working with, they don't, their, their, their storage facility doesn't say Celsius on it, it says Fahrenheit. So what, the, what range of Fahrenheit would that be stored at or where would it be safe? So a couple things we need to do with this one. First one we have to do a conversion. And conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius. The degrees Celsius is equal to the degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 over 1.8. Now, an inequality of this one, we actually have two things we have to keep it between your two temperatures. We gotta keep it greater than 15, we gotta keep it less than 29. Probably something on the low end, it starts to get too cold, on the high end, it starts to get too warm. So this one becomes a compound inequality. And again, the temperature, what we have has to be greater than 15, but it has to be less than 29. Question is going to be on this one, should it have an equal sign with it? Uh, for this one, it says it has to be between. So I, I would interpret that to mean that it, the equal sign should not be there. However, an argument probably could be made that the equal sign is there. You know, if it's a drug that's really important, you're probably not going to want to mess around and keep it at the warmest temperature, the coldest temperature you can. So for this one, I am going to keep it just strictly less than, strictly greater than. Okay, how do we solve this, or how do we get our correct range? Same rules apply. The only thing we really have to be concerned about that's different is if we run into multiplying and dividing by a negative. So multiply both sides by, or actually in this one, multiply both ends by 1.8. Go ahead and whip out your calculator. Let's do that calculation real quick. So on the right-hand side, we had 15 times 1.8. On the right hand side, we have 29 times 1.8. Let's go and flip back. So that gives us a range of 27 less than F minus 32, which is less than 52.2. Flip back to the document camera real quick. Yep. Now question, why did we not have to change the sign? Answer, because we did not, we did not change, uh, we did not multiply it by, by negative. Last step, F minus 32, what do we gotta do to the whole thing? We gotta add 32. Now, as you think, why do I have to do this to all three sides? Why do I have to do this three different times? Well, we're thinking of a range. We gotta move our higher range up by 32, we gotta move our lower range up by 32 to keep those intervals equal. Add 32 to both sides, there 27 plus 32 gives us 59. 52.2 plus 32 gives us 84.4. So arrange this one, we have to keep our drug between 59 degrees Fahrenheit and 84.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Difference between this problem and the last one, this one's a compound inequality, the last one was just a simple inequality with one side. Go ahead and take a second if you want to work another example. Uh, if you want to change the range to come up with one that's very similar but just a little bit different. The crux of this section is the absolute value um, inequalities. What we're going to do with that, these, these become ranges that we find solutions of. Absolute value is where we are talking about for most of this section. So we get a very important theorem for this part, and it's the absolute value inequality theorem. Also with this uh, little introduction to some verbiage, with the first one, if we have a value A that's greater than zero. Now, not equal to zero, greater than, can't have any negatives, you'll see why in just a second. If that's true, then if you have a function U, if you take its absolute value, and that absolute value is less than A. So again, A, any positive value. Our function of U, its absolute value is less than A. That's true if and only if, which in math at the collegiate level we abbreviate with the IFF. If and only if, negative A and positive A, U has to lie in between that. Which to make sense of that, okay, let's say that, that A is 3. 
Well, the absolute value is going to be less than 3 only if u is between negative 3 and 3. If u, for example, is 4, it wouldn't be less than 3. It's not true. If it's negative 4, it wouldn't be less than 3. Not true. A second case. So that's true for the less than. And do you know, this is your numeric value. So when you're looking at that, you have to say, okay, is my numeric value greater? Is my numeric value less? When you're looking at which one of these two items you use. For the second one, let's do it if it's greater. If the value of the function is greater than a. So now think, that's true, if and only if. First, if u is less than negative a, or if u is greater than positive a. Now, this is definitely one that I'd like you to stop and have a conversation about. We're going to talk about a visual representation about this in just a second. But talk, why is this true? Why does it have to be less than negative a? Why does it have to be greater than negative a? After all, u is greater, the absolute value of u is greater than a in this one. Go ahead and stop for a second and have a conversation about that question. Okay, coming back, let's take a visual representation of this first one. So here's the value a, and here's the value of negative a. u has to be less than that. And here's 0 in between them. How do we know that 0 is in between them? Well, because a is greater than 0. Where is u in this one? Is it outside of a, or is it less than a? Well, for this one, u has to be, the absolute value of u has to be less than a, so it has to be less than it on this side. Negative a, if you took the absolute value of that, would be a. So for this one, the visual on that, it's in between the two. For the greater than, so again, you have 0, you have a, you have negative a. Now, we need u to be bigger than a. So on this side, our visual is on the right-hand side of a. Now, think of it for this. Let's just take an example of writing here. If we take the negative of that, that's the same as it is over here. Is that true? Nope. If you took anything less than negative a, anything less than that, that would make this statement true, which is why u has to be less than negative a. Think of a number, like negative 5. If it has to be less than negative 5, like negative 6 is less than that, even though 6 is bigger than 5. So, most important part of this section, absolute value inequality theorem. If a is greater than, here's what the statement for it. Here's the visual. If the function is greater than a, here's the statement. Here's the visual. That's what we're going to use for the rest of this section. So let's take a look at two different values. Let's find out where, in fact, let's take a look at a visual on this. Let's take a look at an example for this. In fact, let's take a look at, uh, let's go for, let's look at three. So let's say that the absolute value of x is less than three. And let's also look at the absolute value of x is greater than three. And let's find the solutions of those at. So let's go to our calculator real quick and take a look at that. So again, let's go back to the graphing part and let's clear out what we had from yesterday's or from our homework. What we want to have in the first part is, again, the absolute value. And for the first one, we want the absolute value, or ABS. Oops. And remember, go to absolute value, go second catalog, and that's the very first thing on there. So we want the absolute value, and we want the absolute value of just the function x. Easy one. And Go technology, come on. 